this video, we'll see how we can get comprehensive DNS information about the target website. So just to give you a quick refresh on what DNS is. So when you type in facebook.com, a DNS server will convert that name to an IP address. Now the process is a bit more complicated. So the DNS server contains actually a number of records, each pointing to a different domain or to a different IP, sometimes to the same IP. So, but in, in general, you request a domain name, it gets converted to an IP address. And depending on that, these information need to be stored somewhere. So we're gonna query this DNS server and see what information we can get through it. Now we're gonna use a website called robtext.com and I'm just gonna put the target website that I want to get information about. So I'm gonna type isecurity.org and I'm gonna hit enter to get a report. Now, as you can see, we will get a big report. So there is a lot of information in here, but you can actually use the buttons in here to navigate to any of the sections below. So if you wanna directly go to the records or to go to the SEO, all you have to do is just click in here and you'll go directly to that section. What we're gonna do right now though, we'll go over all the sections one by one and see what kind of information we got. Now keep in mind the order of this information might be different, but you should have the same sections. So in the analysis, you can see we have general information about the target. So you can see that it's telling us that iSecurity has three name servers, five mail servers, and one IP address. We can see the name servers used by iSecurity and DigitalOcean is the hosting company that iSecurity is using at the time of recording this lecture. So this is very, very useful because you can go to DigitalOcean right now, you'll see the hosting company, and then you can pretend to be them and communicate with iSecurity telling them that you're signing them up for a better hosting, you're giving them something because they are a VIP customer and ask them to log in. Obviously, they'll be logging in to a fake login page and that way you'll steal their information. You can tell them that there is a policy change that they have to accept and again, ask them to log in and steal the information that way. Obviously, you'll do this through a fake login page, and this is mostly social engineering, so it's nothing to do with website hacking, and I cover all this in my social engineering course, but it's very useful because if you couldn't hack into the website through the applications installed, then the only way to get in is using social engineering. Now, Below this, we can see that the target is using Google mail servers. So they're not handling their own emails. They're using Google to handle their emails. Again, you can communicate with the target pretending to be Google and get them to do something or to log into a fake page and steal information that way. You can also see the IP address of this website, which can be used to discover other websites installed on the same server. And this is very, very useful because if you couldn't hack into your target website through the applications installed on that website, then you can try to hack into any website installed on the same server. And if you manage to do that, then you can actually navigate to your target website because they're all essentially installed on the same computer and we'll talk more about that in the next lecture. And below right here, we have a number of similar domains to our target. Now, these might be completely irrelevant, but you can have a look and see what you have. Navigating to the quick info, again, you can see the domain name, you can see the TLD, we have the IP address, the name servers, again, like I said, they're useful because they usually give us information about the domain hosting company or the hosting company hosting the website itself. And we also have the mail servers like we've seen before, it's Google Mail. So that all can be really, really useful. The reverse section will perform reverse DNS lookup. 
So as I said at the start of the lecture, DNS is used to translate domain names into IP addresses. In a reverse lookup, we use the IP address to see which domains link to this IP address. And like I said previously, this can be very, very useful because we'll be able to discover other websites hosted on the same server and we can hack into any of these websites and from there gain access to our target. But with the reverse lookup, you won't always get all the websites installed on the same server. Therefore, in the next lecture, I will show you a better way of doing that. But if you really want to see the, re the results of the reverse lookup, you'll have to log in. So I'm actually going to open a new tab. I'm going to go to Robtex again. And I'm going to click on login right here. And the only way to log into Robtex right now is through Google. So I'm going to click on Google. I'm going to click my email. And that's it, we're logged in. So I'm gonna close this and we're gonna refresh in here. And if we scroll down again to the reverse right here, we have the results of the reverse lookup. And you can either download this as a CSV or view it as a HTML. So I'm gonna choose to view it as a HTML in a new tab. And right here, as you can see, we only have Z security on its own because Z security is hosted on its own server. So there are no other websites installed on the same server. But like I said, if there are other websites hosted on the same server, then you'll be able to see them in here in the reverse lookup. Now going down, we can see a more detailed breakdown of the DNS records. So you can see here we have information about the A record and this is the record that's used to translate the domain name into an IP address. So you can see that isecurity.org links to this IP address which is the IP address of the server hosting or containing the files of the website. Scrolling down we have more SEO information, search engine optimization info, we have the web trust reputation of this website. We have the Alexa ranking. In the share tab, we have the IP of the target website. Again, like I said, we can use this to get websites installed on the same server. We have a graph representation of all the information we gathered. We also have a history section. This is actually very, very useful because you can use this to track all the changes to the DNS info of the target website. So you can see when they started using Google, you can see when they started using DigitalOcean as their hosting provider. So if we scroll down, we might actually be able to see that they were using a different provider. And here you go. We can see that they were using a different hosting company. This one right here, Demo Finf. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But right now, as we can see, they changed and they switched to a different hosting company, DigitalOcean. So again, you can even contact them pretending to be this company and tell them that you're going to sign them up for a better offer or pretend that they violated one of your uh, terms and conditions and ask them to log in to do something. And when they log in, you can serve them a fake file, a backdoor, or again, use the login information, get them to log in through a fake web page and steal the username and password. So information is always very, very useful when it comes to hacking, especially if you want to perform a social engineering attack, which might be your last resort if you could not hack into the website using the applications installed on it. Scrolling down, we can see we have the who's information. We had a full lecture on how to get this and how this can be useful. And finally, we have the DNS block information, which basically is a list of websites known to send spam. So usually emails sent from these websites would be blocked or considered as spam. So as you can see, a very useful website that can be used to get 
information about the server used to host the target website and its relationship with other websites, other servers, which hosting companies are being used. And like I said, all of this can be very, very useful, whether you want to target the website itself, whether you want to target other websites so you can hack into your target website, and even if you want to social engineer one of the admins to gain access to your target website.